Hey, what is going on everyone? In the last video, what we did was create two activities. The first activity that we created was this home screen. And on our home screen, we were able to click this play button that would transfer over to the player setup, the second activity that we created. And this is where we stopped. We set up the layout for this second activity, but we never added any functionality to this button. And we never created the third activity, the one where the users are actually gonna play tic-tac-toe. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video, setting up the third activity and adding some functionality to a few more buttons, and then we'll end the video there. So let's get started. Now what we have to do is create the next activity in our app. This is gonna be where the user actually plays the tic-tac-toe game. So again, we're gonna go over to the far left panel. In the Java folder, expand every single folder within it. Right click on the very last folder. In my case, it's the tic-tac-toe folder. Hover over new, and we're gonna create a new activity by scrolling all the way down to this activity option. Scroll down to empty activity, click that, and I'm gonna call it the game display. And then I'm gonna change our XML file to game underscore display, and then click finish. So now we have three activities, and what we need to do now is place in two buttons in this game display activity, along with setting up our submit names button so it launches the game display activity. So to start off, let's place in our two buttons in our game display activity, but I wanna do it a little bit differently than how we've been doing it now. I wanna use a constraint layout. So we're gonna come down to the palette, down to layouts, and I'm gonna drag in a new constraint layout. Place that within here, and then within this second constraint layout, what we're gonna do is place in two new buttons. So I'm gonna drag them in one by one in here. So they're contained within this constraint layout here. And then just above this, let's place in a text view so we can display whose turn it is. So if we click this constraint layout, take our second button, drag it over just a little bit, and then come over to the far right, click the split tag. And what we need to do is find our constraint layout tag. And instead of having this be match parent, we want it to be wrap content. So I'm gonna double click this, type in wrap content for both the width and height. And now if we come over to our design, you can see that there's this box surrounding both of our buttons. So I'm gonna take this bottom bubble here, drag it all the way down to the bottom of our screen, and then apply a right and left constraint here. And then bring our constraint layout up a little bit. And then if we take our text view, we can also apply constraints to this. So if we go right and left constraints, drag it down just a little bit and apply a top one, position that. Now let's add some constraints to our buttons. So if we click this button here, the one to the left, we can grab this bubble, get the arrow to drag out of there and drag it over to the far left in our constraint layout. And then do the same thing for the top and bottom. And now we're gonna take the far right button. Let's add a constraint to the button next to it. And then we can add a constraint to the top, bottom and the right. Okay, so now that these buttons have their constraints, let's go over and stylize our buttons. So let's click the split button again in the far right, scroll down to our button, and we can apply those two drawable resource files that we created earlier to their background. So let's come down just below where text is defined and type in Android colon background. And then we're gonna reference the red and blue buttons that we created before. So for this one, I'm gonna give it a value of blue, copy and paste this line here, come down and then we're just gonna change it from blue to red for our second button so they're different. And then what I wanna do for our red button is add a margin. So we'll type in Android colon layer margin start and I'm gonna give it a value of 20 DP. And now if we come over to our design, you can see that the buttons aren't butted up against each other. They're separated by a little gap. And then let's change the width of both of them to 150 DP. And now what we have to do is go into our strings.xml file and define a few strings for our buttons and our text view. So I'm gonna make my way over to the strings.xml file and then I'm just gonna define two new strings. So here are the two new strings, the play again string and the home string. Now I'm gonna come back over to the game display.xml file and actually apply those string resources to our buttons. So now if we come down to our design, you can see that the play again text was applied to this button and the home text was applied to this button. Now we aren't gonna create a string resource file for our text view because its text will be changed within our code and we're not gonna hard code a specific value for it. But what I do wanna do before we actually remove that text is stylize it within the common attributes. So let's bump this up to 24 SP and then let's make it bold and that should be good for now. So if we come back into our XML file, I'm gonna remove this text 
because later on we're gonna write some code that'll actually update the text of this view. And before I forget, let's add the background to the main constraint layout. So if we come in that tag, I'm just gonna paste that code in. And then you can take a look and the background should be uniform throughout all of our activities. But now the final thing we have to do in this video is create some on-click methods for our submit names button and the play again and home button. So the first one that I'd like to set up is the submit names button. So let's come over to the player setup.java file and all we have to do is create another public method. So we're gonna go public void. I'm gonna call this method submit button click. And then again, we're gonna pass in a view, call it view. Now within this method, what we're gonna to have to do is extract the two values that were typed within these two views right here, and then bundle them up in our intent and send it over to our game display activity here so we can actually work with those two names. So let's come back to the player setup.java file and within here we can actually extract those two views and assign them to a variable within our Java code. So just above our on create, we're gonna type in private edit text to define a variable for those edit text. And I'm just gonna call it player one and then do the same exact thing for player two. So copy this line and I'm just gonna change it from player one to player two. Now within our onCreate, we actually have to assign a value to these variables here. So to do that, we could type in player one, set that equal to a find view by ID, r dot id dot whatever your ID you gave these views here. So this one and this one. So come back r dot id and I gave them a value of player one name and then copy this line, paste it in and change all the ones to a two. And now we have these two views, this one and this one, linked up to their corresponding Java variables in our Java code. And now we can do things like change the text or extract the text from those views. So if we come back down to the onClick method that we're creating for our submit button, we could type in string player one name, set that equal to a player one dot get text, and we have to convert that text to a string. And then we can do the same thing for player two. So copy this line, paste it in, change everything from a one to a two, and now we have whatever string value was placed within those two views, and we need to bundle them up and send them over to the next activity. So we can do that by creating a new intent. So we'll type in intent, give it a name of intent, set that equal to a new intent, just like we did a little bit earlier, pass in the context, so this, and then what activity do we wanna load up? The game display activity. So game display class, and this statement, and now here's how we actually take these two string values and place them within our intent to be grabbed later on in our game display activity. So we could type in intent dot put extra, and then we have to give it an ID. So I'm gonna call it player names underscore names. And then here's where we're gonna place in our value. Now I'm gonna create a string array. So string, open closing brackets, and then we're gonna pass in the player one name along with the player two name. Oh, and I forgot you gotta put new in front of this. So that should send over our player one name and our player two name. And now we have to run the start activity and then just pass in our intent. So now when this button is clicked, this method will run and it'll bundle up the name that was extracted from our two views into our intent. And then we can start the activity and pass that intent along. So let's link up this method to our submit button. So we can come over to the player setup.xml, click this button, scroll down a little bit, and we're looking for that on click slot again. And then since we made it public, it should be displayed here. Submit button click, assign that to our submit button. All right, so now let's come up to the top right hand corner and click the play button to run our app on the emulator because I just want to test the method that we just wrote really quick to make sure there's no errors. Okay, so our app popped up, we can click play, and I'm not gonna fill out any of these fields yet, I'm just gonna click submit names, and the next activity loads up, but none of these buttons do anything. So what I'd like to do right now is go back to our game display.java file and write two onclick methods for both our play again button and the home button. So let's close down our emulator and go off and write those. All right, so now that we have the game display.java file loaded up, let's come just below our onCreate method and let's define two onClick methods for both of our buttons. So the first one, we're gonna type in public void. And then I wanna create the onClick method for the play again button. So I'm gonna call it play again, button, click. And then within here, we're gonna pass in a view. I'm gonna call it view. And then we're gonna leave this one blank because we need the tic-tac-toe board to be created for this method to do anything. 
So I'm gonna put a comment in here and just put do fancy stuff. And then just below this, we're gonna type in public void again. And then I'm gonna call this on click method, home button click. And again, we're gonna pass in a view. I'm gonna call it view. And then within here, we're gonna create a new intent to load up the home page of our app. So to do that, we have to type in intent. I'm gonna call it intent, create a new intent. And within here, remember we have to pass in the context followed by the activity that we wanna load up. So in my case, it's mainactivity.class. And then to start that activity, all we have to do is type in start activity and then pass in our intent. Okay, so now that we have the two onclick methods created, let's come over to the game display.xml file and let's link those two methods up to our buttons. So I'm gonna click the play again button, come over to the attributes panel, and we're looking for that onclick slot again. It's contained within our common attributes. And I'm just gonna click this drop down. And since we made our methods public, they should display within here. And since we're assigning the play again button, I'm gonna assign it the play again button click method. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing for our home button except I'm gonna assign it to the other onclick method, which is the home button click. All right, so now that we have both of the onclicks linked up to their corresponding button, let's come up to the top right-hand corner and we can actually test our app to make sure that there's no errors. So let's click the play button. And again, I'm not gonna fill out these names. So this should present us with activity three, the place where we're gonna have our tic-tac-toe board. And if we click the play again button, nothing should happen because we didn't put anything in that method. And then if we click the home button, it should take us back to the home screen, which it does. All right, so this is where I'm gonna end the video. I think we're in a pretty decent spot for our app. Now in the next video though, what we're gonna be doing is creating the actual tic-tac-toe board. We're gonna be placing it right here in the center of our third activity. And as always, if you guys have any questions or if you're just having trouble getting something to work, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.